All right, clear front, clear left, clear right. Clear left. Terrain system test okay. Alright, so we're gonna go to W-I-G-G-O, right? W-I-G-G-O. All right, and then sinus. A-N-U-S. All right, there's our flight plan. Deal. All right, so. We're number one for takeoff is one eight. That's our, our hold till release. 118.8. All right, and that's our weather. And then 126.9 is when he uh, gets hands us over. So as soon as I get off this frequency and get on that one, we'll we'll put the other one in. Okay. All right. Got it. All right. And then we're gonna our transponder six two three six. All right, initial altitude is 3,000 feet. Put All right, let's get our weather. Seven, zero, at Niner. Visibility, one, zero. 1,400 scattered ceiling, 1,800 broken, 2,500 overcast temperature, 2, 8 Celsius, dew point, 2, 4 altimeter, 3, 0, 0, 1 remarks, density altitude, 1,800. Boston Regional Airport. Automated weather observation. One four zero zero Zulu weather. Wind one seven zero at one zero visibility one zero. Ceiling one thousand four hundred broken two thousand broken two thousand. Rustin traffic, Skyline 80, Papeco taxiing to the run-up area for runway 18, Rustin. All right, brake check my sign. All right, your side. All right, that's good. All right, left mag. Good. Right mag. Good. And the prop. And back to idle. Out a little bit. All right, Tim. 
grease flaps, landing light fixies that are off. Tango Mike Echo Airport has filed, maintain 3000, expect level 260 when they're in Saptor. Flight frequency 126.9, walk 2216. Exactly 317, we copy, clear as bomb, climb to 326 and 1026.92216, or about uh, 10 to 15 minutes from takeoff, anticipating runway 18. 317, Roger, supervising your number one for departure and readback, correct? Welcome. Clearance delivery, November 80, Papa Echo is number one for departure off of Ruston 18. Number 80, Papa Echo, Monarch Clearance, release for departure, runway control to airspace, fly runway heading. Release for departure and fly runway heading, 80, Papa Echo. All right, so switch this back. Now, what's the other frequency? I'm going to put it in. You go ahead and do your call for... Okay. All right, we got gas on both. Sit 10, and they're down. Taxi lights are all good, and we're released. Rest in traffic, Skyline, November 80, Papa Echo, departing runway 18. Center line, heels on the floor. Instruments green. Airspeed is alive. And rotate. Positive rate, flaps up. Rustin traffic, Skyline 80, Pup Echo, departing area to the south, Rustin. We switch. Are we on departure frequency? Correct. I don't think you get them until you're about 1,500 or so. Monroe departure, Skylane November 80, Papeco 1200, climbing 3000, runway heading. Number 80, Papeco, Monroe uh, departure, Ida. 80, Papeco, Ida. Number 0, Papeco, uh, radar contact, two miles south of Western Airport, climb maintain 7000, see direct we go. Climb maintain 7000, direct so we go, 80, Papeco. <laughs> Two nine or nine or eight. Two nine or nine or eight. It's a five 
Okay, for it's a Bravo Monroe approach. For it's a Bravo, we do have clear. Just for it's a Bravo, somehow they got a stop altitude, and then I'm um, just advised if you uh, if you need to deviate from your altitude. Uh, affirmative for it's a Bravo, looks like we're going to be fine though, thank you. Single contact forward center one two six point three two. We'll see you. Twenty six thirty two. Five up tango. See you. Federal approach Bonanza two four four Delta Delta is with you at seven thousand. Bonanza two four four Delta Delta one on approach North Center two nine or nine or eight. Niner, Niner 8, 4 Delta Delta. Oh, there's the Washita River. Oh, is it? Yeah. Alright, cruise checklist. Gas on both, coal flap. Cow flaps closed. We are leaned out. Altitude, 7,000 feet. Parameters all in the green looking good. Yeah, we would be flying today if you didn't have IFR. Oh no, we would be stuck. It's not bad weather. No. Houston Center, November 80, Pop Echo level 7000. We're deviating slightly left, of course. Raid zero, pop echo, Houston Center, roger. Advise when you're turning direct to uh, your destination. And we'll advise zero, pop echo. All right, well, hello, everybody. Uh, our first video on our leg from uh, Wichita to Ruston, uh, the inevitable playing with new equipment, I think, bit us. Uh, we assumed correctly that the audio cable would work with any GoPro. Evidently, they don't, even though they plug in. And we didn't figure that out until probably toward the end of the trip that uh, the other one wasn't recording audio, but we figured it out because it wasn't charging either. So. I was going to say, yeah, and, the, and it wasn't charging, so it eventually died. We were so far down that we couldn't make it up. So, yeah. so anyway, we just... Uh, uh, we'll probably just put a few little nidbits and tidbits on the Rustin, yeah. uh, Wichita to Rustin flight on this flight. All right, gumps, gas on both, undercarriage fix, mixture rich, prop in, arm flaps to go, switches. So we got any lights on, strobes on, everything's good, seat belts are fastened. We just got uh, power and apps to go. Monroe approach, Skyline Azo, Pop Echo, we have the field in sight. Skyline Azo, Pop Echo, ready to start turn, squad see if our frequency change. Uh, squawk VFR, frequency change approved. Thanks for your help. Zero pop echo. Rust traffic, Skyline 80 pop echo is five uh, to the east. Going to cross midfield for a left downwind for one eight. Rust and full stop. Rust and traffic, Skyline 80 pop echo is two to the east. Going to cross midfield, left downwind one eight. Full stop, Rust. One six wind variable between one six zero and two five zero. Visibility one. Rustin traffic, Skyline Azo Pop Echo, turning left downwind, 1 8, full stop, Rustin. Rustin traffic, Skyline Azo Pop Echo, turning left base, 1 8, full stop, Rustin.
All right, 20 degrees of collapse. Russ and traffic, Skyline Asia, Pampico, short final, one eight, full stop, Russ. All right, speed looking good. All right, one red, three red. Rustin traffic, Skyline needs to go pop back up, clear from way one eight, Rustin. It is warm. <laughs> I tell ya. It's your brother. I think so. This flight. So right now we are level at 7,000 feet. We are uh, going direct to WeGo uh, is our route today, which is a waypoint uh, before we get to Gulf Shores. And we're, uh, looks like we're cleared right now to fly along the Gulf Coast route. Yeah, they used to have cleared us, so hopefully next time we're handed off, it'll still, still, still be, be there. Good. Yeah. They, they actually told us we were cleared direct destination, and uh, going along the little more scenic route didn't add but about 10 or 15 feet. Yeah. Height, so we decided to go ahead and do that. Oh, wait a minute, Ron. You know, with us, 10 or 15 minutes will mean we'll get a headwind, and it'll be half an hour. To yeah, <laughs> well, right now our headwind's seven knots, so that's not... <laughs> too bad ground speed 134 knots so uh not terrible but uh at least better than some of the times we've flown before uh so anyway we're kind of all leveled out uh got our frequencies uh i'm about ready for a little snack what do we got well we've got some looks like fudge oh a little leftover fudge a little oh. leftover i may even have to eat the other piece the other piece okay is it getting melted yet it's, it's a little soft. It's been down there. I think it's a little warm. Okay. Now, this fudge is the fudge I make. Now, we had a video not too long ago about the merits of chocolate chip cookies, uh, which we'll post a link to that. Uh, but the only thing I know how to make in the kitchen, now outside on the grill is a different story, but in the kitchen, and the only thing I'm even allowed into the kitchen to make is fudge. That's right. So... Anyway, this is the old-fashioned, beat it until your arm falls off, creamy fudge. Yep. So this is, uh, well, we don't have snip and taste on, on the YouTube channel, but anyway, I'm going to take a bite. You don't even have to chew that. It just melts in your mouth. Well, it doesn't melt. It dissolves. Mm. This is a couple of days old, and it's tasty. Yeah, well... I didn't realize we still had a couple of pieces, and I, I guess you snuck some in. That's good stuff. So, oh, I'm going to have to get some water to chase that down. That's how you got to get the chocolate off your teeth, too. Oh, that's all right. Not vain like I am, huh? Yeah, now I'm, uh, yeah, you're more vain than I am. All right, let me give you the story. Houston Center, good morning. Clear to Houston via after Alexandria, Zeke to arrival. Let me give you the story on the fudge. My mom used to make this fudge, and it was a recipe her mom, my grandmother, gave her. And she just didn't make it often enough to suit 
liking. If, if you hadn't figured out by now, every time we eat anywhere, I'm a chocoholic. I love chocolate. Yeah. And um, so she just said, well, if you want it more often, you're just going to have to learn how to make it. Now, the way I learned how to make it was you cooked it to softball stage, and everybody has the thermometers and all that. I didn't learn how to make it that way. I learned how to do it in the water test. I didn't even know there were thermometers till I was grown. Yeah, well. Because my grandma never did it that way. Yeah, well. <laughs> With the water and the softball. Me either. And uh, for any of you that, that cook, uh, and, you know, I'm not an expert because I can only make one thing. Uh, there's about a 30-second window, plus or minus. Uh, 30 seconds too short, and it doesn't harden. It makes great icing for birthday cakes. But it, it does. Often for my birthday. Yeah, for her birthday. Uh, but it doesn't harden. It's still, you know, that little too soft. And about 30 seconds or so too far on the other side, it just turns to sugar and crystallizes. So, anyway, that's what I made it uh, for all these years. And then when I met Dennis, her mom uh, wanted to make, make some with pecans in it. And they lived on a little five acres of pecan trees, and we'd always get fresh pecans. And uh, I'd make her fudge. And I really liked it better, I think, with the pecans. Yeah. So the reason why this batch of fudge doesn't have pecans, if we'll backtrack to November of last year, uh, and you can look at the video on the ADM, and I'll post a link to that as well, uh, Janice's mom would always, for about the last, what, 35 years or so, yeah. send me, you know, a huge box shipment full of pecans to make fudge. And I'd go through about 50, 60 pounds of sugar every year making fudge for everybody, and my arm was sore from beating that stuff. And then, uh, you know, it kind of got out, and then, you know, people at church would want some, and and it kind of got ridiculous. So I kind of had to whittle that down a little bit over yeah. the years. Yeah. And uh, so we would only make it if you uh, sick, and sick to us meant go to the hospital and spend the night. Yeah. People who come to church, church the next morning go, oh, I had a head cold, or oh, I got a headache. Oh, of course, this will cure a headache. So anyway, long story short, uh, we had a girl at church one day came in and said, you owe me a batch of fudge. And I said, well, for what? And she had broke her nose. She was wrestling with her kids and one of them helped her, and she broke her nose. And anyway, she um, said, uh, so you owe me the fudge? And I said, well, hold on. If you don't meet the ground rules, you didn't spend the night in the hospital. Oh, y yes, she did. She went in so late into the emergency room, and they were about to discharge her about 11.50 or so at night. And she asked and got them to wait 10 minutes and discharge her a minute or two after midnight so she could say, I spent the night, I spent in, the the night in the hospital. <laughs> and I went, are you kidding? So I had to reward her for ingenuity on that one because, okay, she really wanted some fudge. And so, uh, so that's kind of where it got to be. And then last year, Janice's mom sent us some pecans. And if, if you watch the ADM video, well, she passed away right. before uh, Christmas. Right. And she didn't get her fudge with her pecans. And so anyway, uh, a couple months later, we're, we're sitting there and we had that last batch of pecans to make some fudge. And so we just went ahead and made a batch of fudge with the pecans. And we ended up, uh, uh, Greg Meek, uh, Premier One driver, uh, was in town getting his recurrent training. And he called us up, wanted to know if we'd be interested in having a tour of Textron Aviation. And uh, we said, sure. And uh, he said, afterwards, we'll run out to the plane, do a few things, and kind of check things out. And we had him some shirts, some par for the course shirts we were going to give him for, for his hospitality and arranging the tour for us. Uh, and we gave them to the two Textron guys, too. So uh, they, they, they got them. And um, but the tour went kind of long. And I, I could tell Greg was getting real antsy to hurry up and get them get on. He had to get down to Dallas to pick up his daughter, and then they're on the way to Tampa. 
So our, our little meet and greet in the plane was very, very short-lived, and I didn't want to burden him with the details on the fudge and the pecans and all that. So we, we handed him the fudge, and what he didn't realize was, uh, because he flies a jet and he is at 41,000 feet, flight level 410, it was kind of a symbolic way for Janice and I to get a batch of fudge with pecans into the heavens uh, right. for mom. So, uh, Greg, I, I don't know if you'll watch this or not, but uh, we appreciate it. Uh, uh, you actually uh, uh, kind of delivered us a care package oh. in a very symbolic way. Oh. So, big shout out to Greg Meek, oh. uh, Premier One driver. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, it kind of meant a lot to us, but on the same token, we're letting you know now because I knew you were ready to get on the road <laughs> or get in the air and get moving. So. Anyway, thanks a lot, and that's the story on Fudge. That's right. I'm sorry we don't have any more in that's here. That's it. <laughs> Guess I better be glad we don't have any more in here. Uh, yeah, because when it comes to Fudge, I can kind of eat quite a bit of it. And when we make it just for ourselves, we make like inch and a half by inch and a half like squares. Brownie size. Yeah, so we can say, well, only have one or two which is about the equivalent of six or eight. Oh, anyway. Uh, well, the, the, the best part of when he makes fudge is licking the pot because it's that's the best. But uh, oh, about, and the, the, by the fights that transpire for that. Is that? The fights for, oh. the, for the spatula. Oh, yeah, yeah. Our, our daughter, uh, Allison, and I, there's a spatula that's just perfect to really scoop it out good. <laughs> Because it's still nice and warm, about like how we just ate it. Yeah, uh, so we'll fight over it. But anyway, uh, by the end of the Christmas season, though, we're really not fighting over the fudge pot because you're kind of a little sugared out. <laughs> well, yeah, the last few batches, I'll go, uh, fudge is up, and they'll lay on the couch uh, and kind of look at me and go, well, it <laughs> doesn't stop me. It's just more for me. I'll get the spatula out and get it all cleaned out. But so, uh, anyway, so. Uh, again, don't think I'm domesticated or anything and I'm some great cook. All <laughs> yeah. I know how to make yeah. is fudge. Yeah.